The gospel this morning brings us three points that at a first look, they don't make any sense why they are together in the same passage. One is that Jesus is being accused of casting out demons by the power of a demon. The second is the sin that cannot be forgiven, the sin against the Holy Spirit. And the third is Jesus calling his listeners his family and not his own mother. The first thing that comes to mind is division. And as a matter of fact, that is the work of the devil, division. Looking at the first reading, we hear how the man was so quick to answer, that woman you gave me, she may need of the, of the fruit. How quickly he didn't want to hurt his little ego, but instead put the blame on someone else. Division in humanity. And the woman quickly says, the serpent tempt me. The blame on something else. Division between humanity and nature. Division has been the work of the devil from the very beginning. We experience it in our homes. We do. We experience it in our jobs. Especially with gossip. Because again, we become so addicted of our egos that we will protect it even to the point of gossip, to the point of putting other people down. And it happens also with religious leaders who will quickly say, I know the law. I know what has to be done, and then condemned someone else. Division. We might think of the words of the devil as something from the movie The Exorcist, but it's far from it. Because the devil attacks very subtle when you least expect it. He will use the family to fight against each other. He will bring so much discord in the family, which is the center of society, so that forgiveness cannot take place. But here is the good news. And this good news was also heard by Adam and Eve. Because as soon as they fell of grace, the Lord said to the woman, your fruit, your seed actually, your seed will step on the head of the snake. Immediately, the good news is given to us that the evil one will be destroyed. And we see the fulfillment of this in the gospel as Jesus is able to cast out demons and destroy them. And then power is given to the apostles to destroy demons and even continue today the church holds power over Satan. And this good news also reveals the Virgin Mother. Because the Lord said, your seed. In ancient times, they understood that the woman had no seed. The seed came from the men. So for a woman to have the seed meant that she was going to be the virginal mother. 
Right then and there, the good news was given. And that good news is given to us also. We are a redeemed people. We do not have to live under the slavery of hate, under the bonds of an addiction to our own ego. We are free men and women, children of God. But if we do not learn to forgive, if we do not let go of that anger and frustration, the time is going to come where we are going to need forgiveness. And because our hearts are so hard, we're not going to accept it. This is the sin against the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the agent of forgiveness. Jesus said to his apostles, Receive the Holy Spirit, who says you forgive are forgiven. So at confession, the priest stands as the person of Jesus, but is the Holy Spirit coming to forgive? But if we do not accept the forgiveness, we cannot be forgiven. That is the sin against the Holy Spirit. And if we're not forgiving at home, if we're not forgiving at work, if we're not forgiving each other, how are we going to accept forgiveness? We will be sinning against the Holy Spirit. Division, one more time, being introduced by the devil. Lastly, in the gospel, this understanding of Mary being outside with the brothers of Jesus. Let me explain this passage very quickly. In the ancient language of Aramaic, there is no word for cousin. So anytime in the Bible refers to the brothers and sisters of Jesus, we're talking about his cousins. And how sad it is that Christian communities would use that passage to talk evil about our Blessed Mother. Again, to bring the vision. They will even say, Jesus didn't want anything to do with Mary. He left her outside. That is far from the truth. Again, the vision. The truth is that at that moment, Jesus said, whoever does the will of the Father, well, guess what? Mary has done the will of the Father perfectly. She is the perfect mother for the perfect son. But what Jesus is doing is telling that if we do the will of the Father, we are raised up to the level of His mother. We become like Mary, who does the will of the Father. We are that close to the Lord, becoming His brothers, becoming His mother, as our Lord grows in our hearts. But when we are forgiven, do we really forgive? Do we really raise the person up to their dignity as a child of God? Or do we simply say, oh yeah, I forgive him, but let me tell you what he did last night. That's not forgiveness. Oh yeah, I forgive him, he just not better cross to my path or else. That's not forgiveness. Brothers and sisters, our forgiveness requires that we lift the person to their dignity of child of God. And when it's difficult to forgive, 
there's two things you can do. One, never wish evil on that person. Two, pray for that person. Because if you do not forgive, if you let anger consume you, you're going to become just like that person who hurt you and injured you. The Lord does not want that for His children. Brothers and sisters, the good news has been given to us. We are a redeemed people. We are the children of God. Allow the Lord to come into our hearts and forgive. Allow the, the Lord to come into our hearts so that we can end the vision. So that families can come together again. So that society can flourish. We are the children of God. And we're very much loved. May this Eucharist be a reminder of that love. And ask the Lord that we can have a heart of flesh and not a stone so that we can forgive others.